Welcome and good, e good evening, everybody. Uh, I'm Chris Ward, the Director of Domestic Admissions here at NMMI, located in Roswell, New Mexico. Um, before we get rolling, tonight's going to be a wonderful interactive uh, session. Uh, we've got some great current parents of cadets that are going to join us tonight and give you some insight on their experience uh, having a son or daughter here at New Mexico Military Institute. Uh, because we are interactive, please feel free to ask questions on YouTube chat, uh, or you can Snapchat uh, at NMMI Life, or on social media at hashtag NMMI Parents. Um, joining us tonight, we've got three great families. We're going to start with Christina Montoya, if you'll give us a little background on where you're located, uh, how long your cadet has been here on post. Okay, so I'm in Rio Rancho, New Mexico. Um, I'm originally from Santa Fe. My cadet has been at NMMI. This is her second semester. So she was um, a rat she ratted last semester, which is a recruited training. And, um, and she started her second semester there now in the spring. Next up, uh, we have Michael and Andrea Moore. Where are you guys located, and how long has your cadet been on post? Our cadet has been on post for three years, and we are here in Roswell, New Mexico. So our son has been able to experience both pre- and post-COVID. And finally, Tom and Delane Vandewal, uh, where are you all located and how long has your cadet been on post? Um, yes, we are, we're located in uh, Texas, Wimberley, Texas, which is close to Austin. And our daughter is a fifth class cadet, so she's sophomore. Um, and this is her second semester at, in MMI. Perfect. Well, we're going to jump right into some questions. Uh, the first one, I'm going to start off with Tom and Delane again. Uh, when you guys started the whole process to look and research, uh, you know, for a boarding school option, what specifically were, what were you looking for? Well, so our situation was that our daughter uh, showed an interest in a military career. <clears throat> so she was the one that pushed us to start looking at military schools. Um, NIMI has a great reputation and um, we just, we thought we'd take a tour and any <clears throat> our daughter uh, fell in love with the place. Um, and uh, it was, it was what she wanted. So it was a different, like what we were looking for um, was just a safe place for her uh, where she would be watched over and, and get a great education, of course. Um, and that that worked out great as well as, as, as her finding a place that she wanted to be and feel at home at. So it's been a great fit for us so far. It has been a great fit. I mean, yeah. she needs to be challenged um, academically and physically, and NIMI has been the perfect um, environment for that. And then Christina, what about you? What were you looking for? Um, and I know your situation's a little different being an alumnus of NMMI, but what were, what were you looking for when you started, you know, looking into this whole boarding school uh, process? Well, I, I think one of the things that was really important to me was that it hadn't changed too much from when I was there. And that because, you know, my daughter knew um, how important my time was there and also like how strong our connections are so she's felt a connection to the school and this was her idea as well um and so i think just making sure that that she'd enjoy the experience as much as i did was probably the most critical thing for me awesome and then mike and andrea um what about you guys what what were you looking for uh in a boarding school environment well <clears throat> i think first of all uh we weren't looking it was our uh, it was our son. It uh, it was something that uh, he started out uh, being from Roswell and uh, living here and uh, driving by the the old post. And of course, uh, I I've spent time in the United States Marine Corps, so the regimentation and the discipline is something that 
has been has been good for me and myself. So, uh, uh, you know, Garrett just said uh, that uh, you know when he uh, got older he'd like to attend there, and uh, we've been very blessed. He is a uh, fourth generation uh, cadet at the institute, so I've uh, got a lot of uh, family history uh, there. But um, the the discipline and definitely uh, the history and the reputation that the school has and an amazing education. And then uh, Vanderwalls, kind of back to you guys really quick. Um, how did you guys hear about NMMI? Was it just through research and luck or was there something else that kind of made you aware that New Mexico Military Institute even existed? We have a couple friends in Wimberley who either knew or had a, uh, a child attend there and they had mentioned it way before Emmy expressed interest in and attending. So I had Emmy research um, different military schools and this one popped up and I had already heard about it. So we kind of narrowed in on that and um, we're very impressed with not just what we saw online, but once we <clears throat> toured the campus. Um, so we had, I had heard of it. I just didn't know very much about it, but the, the NMMI website does an excellent job of, of just giving you every detail that you could want. Um, so that's that's basically why we, we narrowed in on NMMI. And then Mike and Andrea, what were your, you know, I know you guys drive by campus uh, every day, it's here in Roswell, but once you actually got on campus and you were really, you know, making taking that step to uh, start the admissions process with your son, what were your first impressions uh, on post? Our first impressions on post were that the facility was clean, it was well run, it was organized, and it was very easy to navigate from one area to another and not get lost. And everybody was just very welcoming and kind. And then Christina, kind of the same question to you, but twofold. I mean, you can talk about your, uh, your initial impression as a, as a cadet, I think is always important. Um, but then also when you're looking through those rose colored glasses uh, as a mom um, and looking to send your daughter here, you know, what were your impressions then? Um, well, I think one of the things was that even though like I wasn't what I would have considered like a, a typical cadet or somebody who would go to a military school, um, everybody did a really good job of telling me how and making me feel welcome and telling me how it would be great for me. And so that's, um, and, and from the very beginning, like they took my interests and, and were able to describe how the school would make them my strengths. And so um, like with Maria, I think the biggest thing for her was given Given the structure of the school, she wanted to be in class and in person and with people. And so having that opportunity was a really big deal for her. And that, that just wasn't possible in other places in New Mexico. Okay, and then uh, Tom and Delane, I think, you know, back to you, kind of the same question. Um, you guys actually got to come out and visit the facility um you know this is kind of pre-covid time so you got to come check us out it wasn't all a virtual tour uh what were your initial impressions and how did those you know live up to maybe the expectations you've had you had uh coming out here just because everything was based off of you know word of mouth so the first impression driving on the campus um it's 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 beautiful that the, the the history there is almost palpable just driving on the campus. You definitely um, get the feeling that it's well run, um, but then you tour the campus and you see the pictures of the old classes and you, you visit the um, museum. Um, it's just, it's really cool. You know, <laughs> I, I mean, it, for your daughter, for my daughter to 
be a part of that and to want to be a part of that. I'm, I'm so proud of her. I mean, it's for her to make this decision. Um, you know, there's so many decisions that can be made by a 15 year old, right? So <laughs> to choose this, which, you know, it's, it's going to just be so great for her and her future developing her character you know it's going to be a challenge because it's a it's got a, a military um background it's a military school um but you know that anything that's that that's a challenge like that is gonna make her a better person in the long run and develop <clears throat> skills that'll just pay off um throughout her whole life so i know i went off from the campus but the <laughs> the campus is beautiful the facilities are beautiful they're all up to date and and the the remodels that are going on it's it's exciting for to be there now and also exciting for the next few years what they've got planned for that place we i'd like to add a little something to that if if that's okay um we decided to drive our daughter up there so that she could get a feel of how how far away she's actually going to be if we jumped on a plane and we were there in two hours, she wouldn't get the full effect. So we actually did that nine, 10 hour drive with her so she could see how far away she was going to be from us and be okay with that. And then after the tour, um, the admissions counselor that we were at, we asked her if, if there's any nearby cadets because the, um, the campus was shut down um, at that time. Um, and she called a local cadet to come who's now a, a a senior there to come over to the campus and visited with Emmy so that she could ask questions that maybe she didn't feel comfortable asking the uh, the person who took us on the tour. Um, and they spent about an hour, hour and a half together, and that was very beneficial to Emmy and actually got her even more excited um, talking to a cadet that that was there. Awesome, and then. Uh... <clears throat> You know, we'll we'll jump over to, to Mike and Andrew for this one. If you guys can remember, I know it was, you know, roughly three years ago, but what was Garrett's first impression? You know, visiting campus and then after that initial week. I mean, was there the whole knee-jerk reaction or, you know, if you can remember that far back, just what was his uh, initial reaction <clears throat> to NMMI? Well, I think uh, <clears throat> I think his initial reaction was, was, was welcoming, uh, you know, uh, like I said, being local, we've we got Garrett involved uh, in the uh, the NMMI junior camps. Uh, being local, so having him exposed to that. Uh, being from the Marine Corps, I'd like to tell you that I had him running three miles in three minutes when he was five, but uh, that that didn't happen. But um, I, I just I think being around and and then and then getting on campus and getting around other cadets uh, and other rats, uh, where he saw that. Uh, he, he, he wasn't in this by himself uh, and, and you saw right off the bat the, the camaraderie and the levitation to each other to, to help mm -hmm. each other be a, something that's, that's really big and it's got a big tradition like it, uh, like it does. Um, and, uh, you know, the initial preparation, uh, the biggest thing is making sure that uh, he was prepared, trying to get him prepared mentally, spiritually, emotionally, and, 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 and also uh, with uh, the gear, the supplies and uh, you know, it, you'll hear a lot about what's called the the, the blue book uh, and, and studying that blue book and standard operating procedures. So uh, it was a fun journey and, and it still is a it still is a fun journey. But um, I, I think he I think he had a little bit of fun. He really enjoyed being there. It was a dream come true for him because since Garrett was five years old, he had always wanted to go to NMMI. You know, and kind of the same question, uh, Tom and Delane, you know, to you, I mean, you come out, you visit, uh, get a chance to talk to a cadet, and then, you know, what was, what was your daughter's initial reaction? Like, you know, okay, this is really going to happen. What was the reaction uh, from her like? I think her exact words were, I mean, because we kept asking, are you sure this is something you really want to do? And I think she, her exact words, I'm 100% sure. She was very stoked about uh, going to NMMI <laughs> and um, excited about the future there. And then back to you, Christina. Again, I know as an alum, you probably had uh, your daughter prepped for 
what to expect, but I also know uh, times change. And from when, you know, from the point where you graduated until she got here, I'm sure things were uh, a little different than the stories that mom had. So what was her initial reaction like? Well, I, I liked that she, I, I actually didn't prepare her that much because I wanted her to have to figure some things out. That's part of the experience. And, and, you know, I think she thought she knew her way around campus having been there since she was little with me every year, but it's different when you live there. It's different when you have, you know, when you have to actually do things and um, and get things done there on campus by yourself. So um, she loved it. She, it took her a little while to figure out um, even just how to get from Bates back to her room. <laughs> you know, that took her a little bit. And, and I loved hearing the stories like, and I got lost. And it's like, well, did you see anything cool though? Because that's when you discover things on campus from your own point of view, right? That's how you learn and, and start making it your home. That's when it becomes your home. And, and once it's your home, it's always your home. Well, uh... <clears throat> I want to thank everybody that's on right now watching. We've got a couple of questions that come in, uh, that have come in. So I'm going to answer two, and then I'm going to turn uh, two of these questions over to the, the parents and um, kind of let them search and see what they come up with. Uh, the first one is, do you have to take a COVID test before you uh, come to school? Uh, based on the way things are right now, uh, when the fall semester would start, if it started tomorrow, we will test all the cadets once they get here. You don't have to have a test before you come to campus. Uh, during the orientation matriculation process, uh, we would get you tested at that point in time. Um, of course, uh, classes don't start for the fall semester until August. We've got to get through the spring semester. A lot can change between now and then. Uh, I think we're all starting to see a light at the end of the tunnel um, and hopefully uh, that's a question that's not even up for debate at that point in time. Um, the next question, uh, is campus currently open to visits? Uh, campus, we are accepting campus visitors. Uh, you can schedule that through the admissions office. Um, I think the big thing is we want everybody to come out, see what we've got going on. Uh, tours are a little bit restricted, though. We've created kind of a bubble for these cadets. We will be able to take families, uh, prospective students around campus, but it's limited to some of the areas we can get you in to see. Uh, for example, we won't be able to go into the classroom buildings just because it's a cadet heavy area. Uh, we'll be able to walk by the barracks, by the dorms, but we won't go into or, or on one of the stoops, one of the floors, and let you into a room right now. Uh, but there is a handful of buildings that we can definitely get you in, let you look at the facilities. So. Um, questions for parents. Uh, we'll start with Christina on this one. Do you think a kid that is shy would be successful at NMMI? Absolutely. My daughter, okay, first of all, she'd kill me if she heard me call her shy. She says, but you know, but Maria presents as shy. She presents as a little bit quieter, a little bit um, more soft spoken. But at the same time, they learn to use their voice. And sometimes that's not volume. Sometimes that's choice of words. Sometimes that's knowing who to talk to about, you know, about what you need to talk about. And that those are skills that you learn there at the Institute. And, um, and I was not ever a shy person, but at the same time, being completely out of my element, um, let's just say I didn't walk in there like, you know, feeling like I could just be very assertive and do what I, you know, and get things done. I had to learn that's a process. And so really, I don't think that there's like one personality type that's going to succeed. Everybody who wants to succeed there is going to succeed there because you're going to learn those skills to, to, um, to articulate, to advocate, and then, you know, to do for yourself and then lead the other cadets. Um, this next one, I'm going to bounce off of Tom and Delane. We were kind of chatting about this before we got started tonight. But uh, people want to know, how's the food at, at MMI? Well, according to our cadet, um, 
it's not good. <laughs> Go ahead. Oh, I. Yeah. She likes to send us pictures. <clears throat> You know what is the what do you think this is or <laughs> but then but then when i you know say oh i sent you a care package um i feel sorry that you you don't like anything there and then she'll say well there's there is some good there are some good things to eat there i think they just like to get pity sometimes and <laughs> yeah these are these are uh they don't appreciate vegetables uh or right. Fruits, <clears throat> anything healthy, anything healthy for you. yeah so unless it's chick-fil-a chicken nuggets every meal it's probably not going to be that. I don't great think you'll ever make him happy. <laughs> you know, and then same question to you, Mike and Andrea. Uh, your son's been here, you know, three years, so he's he's had the full gamut um, of the food. What what's his pulse been? You know, kind of on the food overall. He said the same thing that the food's atrocious, but you have to remember that it is cafeteria food that they're feeding. Um, approximately a thousand children or cadets in less than an hour. So it's hurry up and eat and get out and get to class and get to your activities. And when pushed with my son as well, he goes, yeah, well, it's not quite that bad. There's, there's things I can eat and I can tell that he's not wasting away. So he's eating pretty well. And one of the other things in regards to our son is uh, he's allergic to eggs. And uh, so just bringing in per into perspective how the Institute uh, takes, uh, they take that into effect that your students needs and your allergies, uh, they really cater to that. Uh, he does really well. Uh, now, you're, you're not going to see my son eating steak and potatoes when they're eating chow, chow hall next to him. But, uh, uh, you know, you get what you get. You don't throw a fit, you know, it's a, but uh, <laughs> they're uh, they're not withering away and, you know, keeping them active and keeping them moving like they do. Trust me that there are days they go in there and they say, you know what? I, it doesn't matter. I'm, I'm going to eat cause I'm hungry. You know, and I think, uh, Mike touched on a good point just for everybody watching, uh, food allergies, uh, are always a concern of ours. So breakfast, lunch, and dinner, there's always a hot option. Um, for breakfast, there's always going to be cereal, yogurt, pastries that are laid out. Uh, lunch and dinner, you're going to have soup and salad bar, a sandwich bar. Um, there's usually a gluten-free option and a vegan option as well. And then if you're allergic to something specific, we'll let the, the staff know in there and they can make you something if you've got celiac disease or whatever it may be. They will make something. You're never going to go hungry. Um, there is, is, is plenty of options. Peanut butter uh, is one of the biggest go-tos for a lot of cadets. Um, and, and again, I, I think the parents touched on it. I mean, it's, it's cafeteria food. Um, you go to boarding school, it's not, uh, what mom and dad or, uh, you know, make every night or pick up for you. Um, but the days are busy. Uh, we want to keep you well fed. Um, there's always options. Certain days of course are better than others. Uh, but there is always options. Um, we'll get back to some more questions here in a second. I think this next one, we'll start with, uh, with Christina here. Uh, in your mind going through this process, what do you think the biggest advantage advantage was for you to send your daughter to NMMI? Um, definitely the education. I mean, that's the whole point, right? Is and But it's not just classroom education. It's the real life, real, you know, preparation for the world, um, holistic point of view when it comes to education and, and educating the whole child. And that means their bio, psycho, social, emotional, you know, being. And so that's really nurtured in all, in all aspects. And, and people who don't know NMMI often um, kind of react when I use the word nurture about a military school. But I can use that with all confidence because I know, I know what it feels like to be nurtured in that environment. So to have access to chapel or to whatever you know your spiritual beliefs are right to for to have that encouraged and for you to be able to practice your spirituality for you to be able to challenge be challenged mentally physically um you know when we talk about the food learning that you're you're eating to live not living to eat right that that's what that's a whole purpose of eating is to get nourished but you know that's an education that's an educational point that's something that people need to learn um about you know 
even just about their bodies. And so, so learning in so many different respects, that's, that's the huge advantage to NMMI. So, um, like I said, just the emotional aspect, you know, having to care for yourself, but then once you learn to do that, learning to care for others, um, that's the leadership model there. That's what a core led, you know, um, a cadet led core does is teach them to basically govern themselves and learn how to do for themselves so that they can teach other cadets how to do it. And so when you look at that experience, you know, as a parent, as an educator, I'm also an educator. Um, my job is to help kids help themselves. And so then when they go out into the real world, it's not like, whoa, what did, what did I just get into, right? It's so that they can go out into the real world and say, oh, I know this world. This is what I've been living. And that's what you get at the Institute. And, you know, more family, I'm going to let you guys kind of piggyback off that and then we'll get to the Vandal Walls. But, you know, what do you think the biggest advantage to NMMI is? Well, I think, <clears throat> I think for us, you know, having our, having our son, you know, close and being able to, being able to see him. And I know that's uh, probably a selfish comment on our part living here in Roswell, but uh, one of the really, really enjoyable things is, is, is seeing the other cadets and uh, those, the other friends uh, uh, that, uh, that they make of, uh, of uh, friendships of that, where they live in Texas uh, and they live in Albuquerque and other States and, and being able to have those cadets when there's furloughs and have those uh, come over uh, and just have the camaraderie and um, just see those friendships and see these kids grow, uh, you know, with, with, with the positives and the highs and also with the lows and hearing the challenges that they have. But um, I just can't stress enough, you know, again, it's, it's for me, it's, it's the structure, uh, the regimentation, and I really can't stress enough the education, the education that these kids are getting and, uh, the time and effort that the staff put in and Major General Grizzle and uh, the Commandant and what they do. Uh, and Chris, your staff and your organization, it's just amazing at what they do with these kids. Uh, and um, uh, Christina hit the nail on the head. I mean, they're growing and raising our, our future leaders of, uh, of the world. And uh, we get to sit here and watch it happen. You know, and kind of the same question over to you, Tom and Delane. Uh, you know, what do you think the biggest advantage to NMMI is? Right, so <clears throat> it's definitely a challenge for the students. The education, the, the, the level of scholastic education is uh, over and above anything that we see um, locally. Um, the life education um, is probably like um, the more said that structure and teaching you just how to live a structured life. It, um, you know, you don't you don't improve by not challenging yourself. And uh, that I think <clears throat> both the other sets parents said growth, um, and I think growth is is the main thing that we've seen from Emmy and. Uh, it's just the change that we've seen in her, the maturity level, the growth of maturity level, um, and, and the self-confidence. Mm -hmm. um, it's just impressive. I'm just so uh, impressed with the stride she's made. I mean, we expected a change, but the change that we've seen is, is incredible. In um, such a short amount of time. Yeah, yeah. just right. Um, she's gone from um, worried about... Um, trivial things that 15 year olds worry about. Now she's in charge of uh, rats, uh, recruits a training. She's in charge of other uh, cadets there that she's got to look after. So and that's just in a matter of months. So um, okay. I think when, when we first, what sums it up best for us, when we first dropped her off uh, on her first day there, <clears throat> all of the check-in process and the orientation is for the most part run by the students there. And I turned to uh, Delane when we, when she was going through the check-in process and I said, can you imagine the, the students at our high school back home running this show like this? No way, no way. And that's just a testament right there to, to what life skills they're getting at NMMI. 
you know, Mike and Andrea, back over to you. What were maybe one or some of your biggest concerns, you know, going into this process before you got your son there? I mean, what concerns did you have? And, uh, you know, were those addressed and handled? Well, as a mom, I was concerned about sending my freshman child to live not in my house. And very quickly, my fears were tampered because there was a great staff. The cadets that had already been there prior to my son going were, you know, taken care of because everybody said, don't worry about it. We're good to go. And then, of course, knowing that Garrett had been is fourth uh, generation going where all of the men on my side of the family, my brother, my cousins, my uncles, and my grandfather's brother have all attended. I knew that ultimately our son would be in good hands. My biggest worry was just worrying about her. <laughs> you know, and then Christina, kind of the same thing, uh, kicking that over to you, you know, what, was your biggest concern and, you know, was it addressed and was it handled for you to kind of ease that transition? Yeah, I think my biggest concern was that, um, that Maria would want to tough it out, you know, and not communicate with me if there was, um, if there was anything she needed to communicate with me or not communicate with anybody. Right? You know, I mean, it doesn't have to be me as long as she advocates for herself. And, um, and I'm glad that, like, she found, she knew um, who to talk with right away if she had any questions or concerns. And, and for her, immediately, that was her, her counselor. She's a fourth classman and she's a high school junior. And it's a little intimidating to go in as a fourth class. Um, new cadet because they've that cohort's been there for two years already. They're established. A lot of them are right. The, a good amount of them are established, and so for her to feel comfortable going to her counselor and saying, you know, I'm trying to figure this out, and everybody else seems to know what they're doing, and I don't, and and for her to get us the support, um, no matter what the question was, was really um, it just made me feel really proud of of the staff and the students and of Maria for being able to advocate right away. You know, and Tom, Tom and Delane, uh, I'm going to kick the same question over to you. Uh, you know, the distance from your home to uh, our campus here in Roswell is a little bit further than the previous two uh, uh, sets of parents. So what were your or what was your biggest concern and how was that? Uh, was it addressed and, and handled and, and ultimately uh, not a concern anymore. Well, before she left, we had a lot of discussions. Um, I just wanted her to have a realistic idea of what she was getting herself into. Um, and, and I think my biggest fear was her getting homesick and then begging to come home. And, um, you know, we invested all this time and resources and now if she comes back. She's going to be behind back in school. Um, so I worried a lot about the homesickness um, and the fifth class academic advisor sent all the parents um, kind of introduction, just what to expect, what your cadets going to be going through. And I must have read that five times <laughs> and it was they are going to get homesick. Don't panic. You know, when they call you, want you to rescue them, give it 24 hours, talk to them again, see how they're doing. And and we did that. We didn't panic and we said, remember, let's give it 24 hours. And we talked to her 24 hours later and we'd say, how are you doing? I'm fine. What? Why? You know, she completely <laughs> forgot that she called us 24 hours before upset about something. So initially, that's what I was I was worried about, um, even though she had never been homesick before going to camps and and things like that. Um, but I was worried with her being so far away and just calling and saying, I want to come home. Um, and we did get that call, uh, what, two or three weeks into into it. And we waited the 24 hours. And after that, she never mentioned it again. <laughs> so you want to add anything? Uh, as, you know, as a dad dropping your daughter off uh, at a school that's um, in another state, uh, you worry about her safety. Um, they're, they're being watched really close there. Um, they're, it, 
I'm not now that I that I see the day to day activities and hear about what goes on, and um, I'm I'm not worried about her safety anymore. Um, you know, she's so strong. I'm worried about the other people around her, their safety. <laughs> not really, but she's she's uh, she's very well taken care of there. I I don't skip a beat on that. I don't lose any sleep at all about her well being. You know our safety. Well, we're gonna we're gonna jump back to some questions again for those of you that are watching. Uh, please keep the questions coming. Um, I'm gonna slide some of these over uh, to the parents here in just a second. Uh, one big one though that came in is is there separation between the high school and the junior college piece? We've got those two pieces, and uh, I, I think the best answer is <clears throat> is yes, um, but also a soft no. Um, you know, the, the high school kids assimilate and grab onto things quicker when they're looking up to older students. So, you know, being around those 19, 20, 21 year old students, it helps push them, um, and provides, you know, a role model and, and leadership for them to try to aspire to, um, you know, so they're not separated in that sense. Uh, also in the classroom. You know, we've got a handful of kids that are getting ready to graduate in May and will graduate with their uh, high school diploma and their associate's degree on the same day. So they coexist and co-mingle in the classroom. Um, outside of that stuff, there is separation. Um, there's three floors in our dorms, three stoops, we call them. Uh, the first stoop all the way around is for junior college male cadets. Uh, the middle stoop, second stoop all the way around is for our high school male cadets and then third stoop up top is where our high school and junior college female cadets reside um, you know so again there is separation there um, but you know we do have them i mean in study hall it's great if we've got a, a 15 year old sophomore in high school that's at study hall and, and they're sitting across the table for uh, a sponsored prep student for west point um, that's going to help them with their pre-algebra uh, algebra one class so you know, they do intermingle throughout the day, but there definitely is that point where separation exists. Um, this one I'm going to cut loose to the parents. I, they've all lived through this. Uh, we've got a question about the 21, 28 day phase. Uh, so when new students arrive, they're, they're considered recruits at training or rats. And then for the first 21, 28 days, they uh, kind of get excommunicated from contact with their parents unless they want to send a handwritten note. Um, of course, they do get their cell phones now. That's for safety purposes. We can use technology to lock down campus if we ever needed to. Um, but we'll start here with, with Tom and Elaine. You know, what was that experience? I know it's still fresh. You guys just kind of went through it. What was that first 21 days uh, being away from your daughter and not, you know, having constant contact with her? What was that like? Well, it was, uh, I think the fact that they have their phones, you're not as on a deserted island as you think. We had a little bit more contact than we actually anticipated having, which was good because, uh, you know, it's 21 days, you drop them off and you don't hear from them allegedly, but, but with the phones, you, you're able to, to contact them a little bit. But I think it's a good thing to to um, to help the the kid focus, help our the student focus a little bit more on the task at hand, um, and not you know not be distracted by the normal distractions that they were used to before they left home. So I think it's good. But when they when she, when our cadet reached that twenty one day challenge and completed the Bronco challenge that was the first time that she had FaceTimed us right after it. And she is smiling, grinning from ear to ear, and she's covered in mud and filth. And she was so happy that um, she was like, that was awesome. You know, she's just, even her hat was just <laughs> brown, saturated with mud. I mean, it was, it was a really neat moment because it had, we hadn't had a face-to-face -face conversation like that um, for 21 days. And then to see her just minutes after finishing and so proud and, and so filthy <laughs> and so happy. So it was, it was, it was a really neat memory. 
you know, and then Christina, what was that like for you? Again, you, you kind of just went through that uh, during the fall semester. So what was that, uh, what was the communication? How was the challenge with the communication piece uh, with your daughter uh, just leaving home? Well, I think, um, you know, it, it was hard because I'm really close with my two girls. And so, you know, it, it, and it was very different for me to even be able to have any contact with her because my parents didn't get to hear my voice for 21 days. And so to be able to get a text or a phone call or for me to shoot out a text like, are you alive? Yes mom i'm alive i'm fine you know that was something that that wasn't an option for me so at the end of the three weeks i was like well that was fast <laughs> um but i wasn't experiencing it this time right and i so um for her for her to say mom i've never felt so proud in my life when it was done you know was a really big deal um i couldn't believe how fast it went for me as a parent i didn't i didn't think it would I remember my parents saying how fast it was and I thought it was an eternity. And, um, and so to experience that now as a, as a parent, it, it went by really super quick. And I was like, okay, from, you know, now I know it, like before I know it, she's going to be graduating. Um, I'm going to blink and she's going to graduate. And so, you know, I'm just trying to cherish every milestone, right? Like that first break home, you know, all of those things I, that that moment taught me to cherish every single thing, almost like when they were babies. Right. And they took that first step and you you mark it down and stuff. I, I realized not to take any of these things that she calls home for for granted. You know, and then more family, I'm going to send you guys a little bit different question. Um, you know, your son being on post for for a couple couple of years now. Can you talk about how the communication is between cadets and their teachers and then teachers relaying that information and communicating with you, uh, you know, giving you updates if you want updates or, you know, if we're seeing your son struggling, you know, and you reach out to the teacher, do you get to, you know, do they share with you, you know, kind of what the issue is, what the disconnect is? Can you just talk about how that communication exists between all those pieces and you? Well, I think the first thing, most important thing is as parents, uh, I would say you really need to be engaged, uh, be engaged, be informed, pay attention. Um, the staff and the communication that you're provided is top notch. Um, but you know, you will get that information. Like some of the other parents have said, you, you know, you're going to hear the, the complaining, the crying, you know, let, let those kids figure it out. Let them, let them fail, so to speak. Uh, but they have a chain of command to use and that chain of command, Honestly, you as parents, that you'll follow that as well, and you're given that right up front. Uh, those kids are taught uh, to to go over their chain of command with the parents and who to call and who to contact. But the the staff, the the uh, the directory, you can reach just about anyone on the staff at the institute. Um, there may be a particular department that you need, but if that department doesn't have the answer, you can always find a way around getting communication. So. Uh, I couldn't be more happier, um, you know, and, and, and experience that also being part of the parents club and sponsoring international cadets and having them stay with us through uh, Thanksgiving and Christmas one year and the communication that they had with us and with their parents back home. Uh, it, it really is. It's there for you uh, uh, to the certain extent, um, but um, I'd say it's a positive experience. The communication is what you make of it as a parent. You can have as much or as little communication as you want. Uh, our child is a very smart cadet and he knows how to read his syllabus and he knows how uh, it works when it comes to his grades. So I do get calls from his counselor or from his teacher from time to time. Oh my goodness, he hasn't turned in his homework and we'll contact our son. Well, mom, it's only 0.001% of my grade, if I turn them in all at once, it's no big deal, but I'm getting A's on all my stuff. So like, relax. Um, I have been known pre COVID to show up on campus and talk to parent or talk to the teachers. And I have treated <laughs> and that was very embarrassing <laughs> to our cadet. Uh, I'll tell you what he made sure that mom never has to show back up again. And he sure has taken care of 
uh, what he needs to take care of. But the communication is definitely what you make of it. You can have as much or as little communication with the chain of command and his teachers, you know, their teachers. I've got something to say about this whole letting your kids go. Christina, Tom, Delane, you know, when our kid left, we cut his cell phone off. We we blocked up his room. We didn't wash his clothes. Our <laughs> our, our food bill went down. We gave ourselves a raise. <laughs> <laughs> You know, the, the, the second piece of that qu uh, question, I'm going to kick back over to Tom and Delane. And, uh, um, you know, we talked to everybody about, hey, we're in the classroom. We're teaching face-to-face. -face. Um, so the question says, you know, uh, are the cadets staying in their room all day? Um, you guys talking to your daughter, I mean, do you feel like she's in her room all day? No. No. And sometimes I track her. <laughs> Tell where she is on campus and not she may be watching. only because I miss only because I missed her. I'm like, oh, okay, um, but no, she's rarely in her room. Um, she's yeah, no, she's only in a room to nap um, on Saturdays and Sundays. Mm -hmm. That's and, and and study. She does a lot of studying in her room, but she's the. I mean, they're 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 in a a, a school with how many other kids their age like if you're in your room what what like <laughs> there's no video games in the room mm -hmm. you know what i mean there's no I playstation there in, there in the because room because they're studying it's... or they're trying to catch a quick nap to recover yeah. and get back out there again right um another great question that came in uh is you know what are the demographics of the cadets and faculty um you know I will turn this over to Christina here in a second, but we've got 36 countries represented on campus um, and 28 different states currently on campus. Um, you know, Christina, as an alum, um, you know, even when you were here as a cadet, uh, you know, what was diversity like on campus for you? Well, it's much, okay, New Mexico is a culturally diverse state. And NMMI is even more diverse. I mean, I was exposed to more cultures and people from other places. And um, it was almost like leaving the state and, and leaving to, to go to some place I've never been before, you know, within my state. And um, the male to female ratio is eight to two, which encouraged me to step it up as, as a female. You know, um, which was really, which was really a good experience. And and when I walk on campus now, I see that I see those girls. They're loud and proud. I love it. I love hearing them. You know, um, and so, but just being able to meet people from different countries, from every state in the union, right? Every single state, with different experiences, different life experiences, different cultures, different beliefs. You know, it was. It was just really an amazing experience. But now, 25 years later, I'll say 25 years later, <laughs> it, it may, it'll be 25 years since I graduated. Um, we're worldwide. We're all over the place. And we still communicate and it's still like that. What are you doing? Where are you at? What's it like in New Zealand? What's it like in Italy right now? What's it like in Germany? What's it like in Abu Dhabi? What's it like, you know? Um, we've, we've got people everywhere and with technology, we get to stay in touch. We get to stay in touch with each other and still experience those things, um, through one another. Right. And, and even sometimes live vicariously through, through, um, each other's experiences and learn and grow. We're still learning and growing as a core, you know, a core of former cadets. We're still learning, still learning and growing from each other. And that's just an amazing thing. Well, real quick, before we jump back onto some more questions, um, I just wanted to take a second and let everybody know that we are still open and, and accepting applications for the fall term. Uh, the deadline to submit those applications is July 23rd. Um, the application is easy to do. It's online. Visit our website, uh, www.nmmi.edu. Uh, hover over the admissions tab and it's going to give you a little drop down. It'll say apply now. Um, go ahead and click on that. Take you about 20, 30 minutes to fill that application out. It is free. 
uh, to submit your application. It is free to, to work with your counselor, get that application processed. It's free to get accepted. Um, there is no fee. You are not financially obligated to anything until you come here uh, for the matriculation piece. So again, that deadline is July 23rd. Um, and we're accepting applications for the fall and the spring term of 2022. So um, back to the parents, uh, Mike and Andrea, you know, what is the biggest piece of advice you can give to parents um, that will help them or that will help their kid adapt, help their child adapt? What, what would you tell another parent if they said, you know, what, what can we tell our son or daughter that's going to help them adapt from day one? Uh, I would have to say my biggest uh, piece of advice for parents to tell their kids is to get involved, stay active. The quicker you get involved, the quicker you find different activities that you like, whether it be sports or the different clubs that are um, available to them on campus, the quicker they're going to get past any homesickness. And then my second piece of advice would be to tell parents uh we've kind of touched on it earlier is when your kid calls you and says oh i'm homesick come get me right now i hate this place it's terrible give it at least 24 hours and then contact them back and and talk to them because most times it's just a moment in time it's just an incident and your kids are going to forget that it happened and they're going to want to stay if I had a nickel for every time my child said, oh, this place is terrible, I'm never going back, uh, had I picked him up at any point in time, he would have missed out on so much because he does absolutely love it. It's just there are moments in time he's not fond of. And the neat thing about being local and uh, being a part of the Parents Club is reach out, those of you that aren't local, reach out to other, other parents, uh, create a network. Um, We've really enjoyed uh, some of the different parents that we've met of kids uh, that are from other states and other countries um, and, and uh, develop that network and uh, let those kids figure things out. And you just really have to know and believe uh, and from our experience that the staff, they are protected. Um, they, they're in a great place, um, but, but let, them, let them stumble, let them figure it out. Um, and above all, parents, relax. You know, and Tom and Delane, what about you? What's one piece of advice you would, you would give a, a, another parent that's considering send it, sending their son or daughter uh, to NMMI? I like Mike's advice. Relax. <laughs> that's good. Because, uh, you know, it's a little tense at first, um, um, but it, you know, it, it all works out in the end. I mean, not, yeah, it's, it'd be, it'd be pie in the sky to say everybody, it works out for everybody, but give it a shot. You know, um, the homesickness, uh, yeah, you, they'll have, they'll be homesick and then they'll have great memories. The next they'll meet somebody. And, you know, I just, I think about when I left home the first time and I was homesick and my buddy walks down the hall. I never met him before, but we're friends. And he's like, Hey, let's go play catch. That was it. I was done being homesick. So, you know, the experiences are there to be had, um, relax and the kids get involved. I'm going to just steal the Moore's idea. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and Christina, what about you? What's one piece of advice you would give to a, a prospective parent, um, that would help their son or daughter adapt? Um, ooh, I'd say, um, I'd say, you know, ask them, I'd say like, Ooh, this is kind of hard for me because I have a lot of them. So like you asked me for one and that's really hard. <laughs> um, you know, I, I think I always go back with, with my child. Um, I'm a very solutions focused person, right? And so, and, and, and that's how I've taught her to be. So I always ask if, if my, you know, if I ask her to think about whether or not we're being part of the problem or being part of the solution. 
And that means, you know, whether it's our attitude, our feelings, what our next step is. And so like, is going home, are you solving anything or are you stopping yourself from achieving something? Right. And so, um, so just in, in general, like there's a solution there for, for anything that were to come up. There's a person there to help you. There's an SOP in your blue book. There's a cadet next door. There's your troop leadership. There's, you know, there is a solution for any problem that can come up there. And that's what I've taught her. And that, and if you look at it that way, and if you teach them to look for the solution, they're going to be fine. And they're going to kind of forget, you know, about what the problem was if they start looking for the solution. They're going to start finding other things and they're going to get distracted and they're going to move on. Or they're going to say, I don't have time for this. And they're going to start studying. <laughs> You know, and I think, you know, using that answer and going back to you, uh, Tom and Delane, uh, you know, chances are when you dropped your daughter off, she knew absolutely nobody here. Um, no, zero cadets anyway. So, you know, how long did it take her to make and establish friendships uh, coming to a foreign environment? She was standing in line to fill out paperwork. Like uh, five minutes after we got there? Yeah. She wasn't even officially enrolled yet, and that's when she started just talking to the kids around her. And, um, but we, you know, it's, I think it's pretty instantaneous, you know, it's, um, it doesn't, it's, they're all around, you know, there's, they're going to find somebody, gravitate to somebody that's, that, uh, that they can talk to and hang out with. And then Mike and Andrea, um, you know, having your son here for three years again, can you kind of explain, you know, how much free time do cadets have and then how scheduled out, uh, you know, are the evenings and weekends for these kids when they're on post? Well, let's see, pre-COVID, they had, in my opinion, I could see more free time because our cadet did come home. Him and his buddies would come home. I'd be able to cook for them and have big spreads. And we had a house full of cadets from Friday evening until Sunday afternoon-ish when they all had to go back on post. And as long as they were studying and getting their work done during the, the week, they were able to get off post and come home. And during COVID, I want to say they probably have a decent amount of free time because I know that the school has been giving them uh, activities to do on the weekends so they're not just wandering around like zombies lost with nothing to do but there's also definitely always time to do their homework their class works any projects that need to be taken care of so it's definitely just like life would be if you went to a typical college or you were going to a typical high school you've got you just have to learn how to balance that and to so you can study enough to get good grades but yet schedule your time out so you can have those that freedom our son participates in basketball for example so he has communicated to us at least that he's had more than enough time to not only study but go to practice and participate in his sport and still enjoy the free time to hang out with his buddies and hang out um, when there's no school Time management is one of the key areas that your, your child's going to learn um, in managing that time. You can really, if you, if you don't watch it, you can really load up your time where you, it's, it's tough to manage. You know, if, if you look at some of the difficulties that we would say that our cadet had would be is time management when he took in basketball and he took in, uh, he would, he's uh, been offered to be able to take some uh, college core classes, uh, tutoring, uh, so if you don't, if you don't watch it, there's just, there's only 24 hours in a day. Uh, but uh, time management is big. You know, and then Christina jumping over to you. Uh, I know the Vandewalls touched on this earlier about the changes they've seen, uh, with regards to their daughter in, in such a short period of time. But, um, you know, what's one or two positive changes maybe you've seen in your daughter in, you know, about a semester and a half of being a cadet right now? I'll tell you, she's found her sense of humor again. 
and about everything. She can laugh about just about anything these days, which I love. Um, because I'll tell you, before she went there, she she really didn't have much of a sense of humor about anything. <laughs> and so I love that she's been able to do that and find her voice. Um, you know, I, I've always been very involved in my children's life and their education and, um, and just who they're with all the time. We're, we're always together. And so for her to find her voice and for her to um, just find her own niche, she is so happy there. That kid is so happy there. And, and again, like even if something does come up, um, she knows we're going to solve, we, we, she knows we're going to find a solution and we're going to fix it, you know, or we're going to help her fix it, right? We're going to give her the tools to fix it and put it right back on her to, to do it, but with the support and, and knowing that she's, that she can do it alone, but that she's not alone. And so that belief, I think that belief in herself. And then. Tom and Delane, I know you guys touched on that er earlier, but anything you want to add, you know, in that short period of time, you know, just a, a positive change that you've seen in your daughter and, you know, basically a semester and a half as well? I think her um, self-confidence uh, to see, I mean, she can see what she's doing. Um, and I think that bolsters her confidence to to be challenged the way she's been challenged and to rise up and uh, excel. Um, I think that, you know, that self-confidence is, is uh, you know, it's lacking a lot. And, and a lot of these kids these days, they're looking for um, approval on, on social media and, and stuff like that, which, you know, there's that, 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 that's still there, but she's starting to see the big picture that, social media approval that is not the same as life experience and challenge yourself and complete something and that's you know that sort of approval is priceless you know that you know that that sort of sense of accomplishment um and that just develops her her character that'll stick with her the rest of her life so um you know it's we don't we don't really get to, to see much of her with COVID um, and, and we try to FaceTime her and she's always in the library studying because, you know, they're there. They have mandatory study hall every day. Right. So um, she spends a lot of time studying and, um, and staying focused on the task at hand and uh, um, like time management, uh, time management skills. Um, that's another one that, um, that like Mike said, uh, is a big learning something that she's really learned um, she gets a lot done she's she's going after what she wants and when she was home i was always trying to do everything for her <laughs> if she wanted something i was always getting involved but now she's taking it upon herself she's not even discussing it with us you know she after her first semester she decided that she wanted to apply for a cadre position she had already submitted her application filled it out done deal before she even mentioned it to us, you know, and then she ended up getting that cadre position for the spring. Um, so she made it happen for herself and she's had you know, a few small issues here and there. And I want to jump in and, and, and help or rescue her. And she's like, mom already taken care of it, you know, went to the, the right person and it, it's, it's done. So I really like seeing that she's, she's being assertive. She's got the self-confidence to, to go after what she wants and she's making it happen. You know, and then Mike and Andrea, I'm going to, uh, again, throw you guys a little bit different question. Um, you know, one of the questions that came in is, and you've touched on a little bit, is, is there a parents club where parents can get involved with other parents and, you know, help get assistance, help get questions answered? Um, and if so, how do they get in contact with that group of parents? There's absolutely a parents club and it's called the NMMI Parents Club. We've got a Facebook page where you can contact us and we would love to have people involved from all over the world, all over the country. I am in fact the vice president of the Parents Club and Michael sits on the board with us. So uh, if you wanna get involved, all you have to do is go on Facebook and look us up and we would be more than happy to get you reeled in. 
whenever we meet once a month. And when we do meet, we uh, FaceTime live our meetings. So that way any parent, no matter where you're at, can log in and see what we're discussing during the meeting. They can submit questions. We have somebody from the school come in and have a discussion and a talk. We try to bring in the commandant once a year. We bring in the general, the superintendent of the school. So that way parents have the opportunity to meet and put a face to the name of these people that are interacting with their cadets on a day-to-day -day basis and then also get their questions answered. And even when we're not having our meetings, you can go onto the Facebook page and see what is going on. We try to post different activities that are going on, pictures that are taken during those activities. So you can see your little Johnny, your little Susie, because uh, you know, you're know you not in town and don't get to see them and touch them. And definitely during COVID, you're not able to have that interaction. And then you can always post your questions, comments, and concerns on our parents page and we will, if we don't know the answer right away, we will definitely seek out the appropriate place, the appropriate person, and we will get back to you as quickly as possible. We have a lot of fun. We do, uh, there's ice cream socials that we do, uh, the uh, Christmas uh, get together that we've had. We've had some fun the past few years. Uh, we've had Mr. and Mrs. Santa Claus come. And boy, you talk about seeing some kids that you send off to an institute to grow up and be adults. And then you put them with Mr. and Mrs. Santa Claus and see all these kids want to sit on Santa's lap and take pictures together. It, uh, it's, a, it's, yes. a, it's a neat, exciting experience. So we have fun and uh, uh, we, we try, to, try to do our best to, to help the parents that are out there. All right, I've got one more big question for uh, the families that have joined us tonight. Before we get to that, uh, I'm going to roll through these last uh, questions that came in really quickly. Uh, one of them was, how is bullying or behavior challenges handled? Um, there are certain things uh, here at the Institute that are zero tolerance. Um, bullying, hazing, um, we have a zero tolerance policy for that. If that's going on, uh, students are just, they're not even asked to leave. Um, they are told to leave. Uh, we're not a reform school. We're not going to put up with that. We have a lot of great young people here. Um, they all don't necessarily want to be here, but they, they know that we're the launch pad. We're the stepping stone to get them where they want to be, um, and they want to be challenged academically. And at the end of the day, uh, we don't have time, and those cadets don't have time for those distractions. So uh, certain behavioral issues you know, are just not tolerated. Um, you know, some other things we are going to coach kids up. We're going to work with them, um, get them to understand, you know, what it takes to be an adult, how to be a respectful adult. Uh, so some minor infractions, yes, we're going to work with them on those um, unless it becomes a reoccurring problem. And then again, uh, they're not asked to leave. Um, they are told to leave campus. Uh, same thing uh, comes into play if they're not here and they don't want to focus on their grades. Uh, academics is what we do. It's who we are. We use a military model um, to get that done and also to educate these young people on the soft skills that are going to help them be successful in the future. So, uh, you know, between their behavioral issues and not focusing on grades, those are two easy ways to uh, get kicked out of NMMI. It is easy to get kicked out of here um, because we've, we've got such a great group of young people that do want to be challenged and do want to be, you know, laser focused and successful later on in life. Um, service academies. So we serve as a prep school for all of the service academies. Um, what that means is we have a number of, when students apply to a service academy, one of three things happen. You're either uh, accepted outright, um, you're put on a one-year waiting list uh, called a sponsored prep, or you're told no. So NMMI has about 40, between 40 and 60 students every year that have been put on a wait list or were told no. Uh, we bring them in. Uh, we've got a prep advisor that works with them on uh, all the paperwork they need to do to resubmit their application for the service academy. They take the same course load here at the institute that they would take at that service academy. And then uh, the goal is after that one year here, we're able to get them accepted into the service academy of their choice or a service academy. Uh, the kids that are put on a one-year wait list, uh, we track at about 95% success rate with them. 
the kids that are told no outright, uh, we track at about 40 to 45% success rate with them. Um, what do kids need to bring? What do these future cadets need to bring? When you're accepted, uh, you will receive a link to a parent packet that the Commandant staff puts out. Um, it's going to list everything that you need to bring. It's going to list everything that you can bring. And then it's going to have a lovely long list of all the things that you cannot bring that are not allowed on campus. Um, this would be a hot plate, a microwave, a mini fridge. Um, but it details everything out. It also has a list of the stuff that will, will be provided for your cadet upon arrival. So once you're accepted, you'll get the link for that. If you're curious before you get an acceptance or before you've even applied, again, if you go to our website, www.nmmi.edu, and you hover over Corps of Cadets, it's going to give you a drop down to the Commandant's office. Click on the Commandant's homepage, and right there, you're going to see Parent Packet 1 and 2, a link to both. You can click on those and, and uh, do some reading. It'll be a little, little bit lengthy reading. I think it's about 50 or 60 pages, the Parent Packet, for everything that you've got to read through. But it'll detail everything out for you. Um, last one before we get back to these parents. Uh, it revolves around the foreign languages that are taught here. Um, we have more than just a couple foreign languages that we will teach to the cadets. Um, we do not use Rosetta Stone to do that. If we are going to put them in an academic environment where they can learn a language, we're going to have a faculty member that has the ability to teach that language to those cadets. So off the top of my head, I know that we have Spanish, French, Arabic, Mandarin. Um, I think those are the four big ones that stick out to me at the moment. Um, but we actually have a faculty member on staff that will, will be working with the cadets to teach them that foreign language. So um, thank you, everybody, for the questions. If there's anything else you want to send in, we've got a couple of more minutes. Um, but during that time, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pose one more question to each of these parents. It's the same question for all of you. So uh, I will let Christina go first. Tom and Delane, Mike and Andrew, you'll get a little time to think about this. Um, but to this point in time, Christina, what do you think is the most important thing that NMMI has provided your daughter? Um, um, I think the most important thing is, um, is the reminder that it's always about will versus skill, right? The willingness versus ability issues. You know, um, you know, when you show up and you have a positive mindset, a growth mindset, you're going to get through pretty much anything that life throws at you. Um, if it's an, if it, so again, and, and if it's an ability issue, there's going to be support there all the time. If it's a willingness issue, that's an inside job, just like happiness. It's an inside job. And you, once you get that squared away, you know, you focus on that and you get that taken care of again, you can do anything that you want. And she, she knows that, but now she's living it without me being there to remind her all the time. You know, Mike and Andrea, over to you. Um, you know, what do you think the most important thing uh, is that NMMI has provided your son? I would have to say the education and responsibility. It's kind of a two-edged sword with being away from home and not having your mommy you know, as Delane had said earlier, you're, you know, I was definitely that mom that was uh, going out behind my child and helping them out. I wanted to be the problem solver for him and watching him grow over the past three years that he's gotten a great education. He has learned the responsibility and he has learned how they go hand in hand. I agree. Uh, education definitely is uh, top notch, number one. The discipline, um, uh, the respect, um, just the esprit de corps, uh, and the band of brothers uh, that he has with his uh, fellow cadets, um, and it's it it really is a it's been a gift. It's been a gift that the school has has been able to offer to to our son, and um, it's 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 really really nice. And Tom and Delane, same thing over to you. You know, in, in this short time, what do you think the most important thing NMMI has provided uh, 
for your daughter, to your daughter? Uh, I think if you had to narrow it down to the most important thing, I think it's the challenge. You can't grow without challenging yourself. Um, and do you want to challenge yourself a little bit or do you want to raise future leaders? And I think, and I, I don't want to sound elitist, but I think the school is, is putting out future leaders. You know, they're going to be difference makers, world makers, world difference in the world changers things, difference makers and world changers. Um, and, and you don't get there without the, the challenge the, that, that NIMI can provide for your kid. Um, and then the independence, which was touched on before. And just real quick, uh, you know, as a, as an example, uh, our daughter, um, was it a text where she said, um, we talked, she talked about all the opportunities that going to NMMI um, is giving her for her future. Like the door is wide open. You don't have to, you know, you don't have to go into a service academy. It's great if you do, um, but the door is wide open if you go to NIMI um, for sure. And, and so I would say challenge and independence uh, are the two things that are the, mm -hmm. the biggest. I couldn't just do one word. I get two. <laughs> Delane, anything you want to add to that? I'm good. I think he covered it all. Okay. Well, again, I want to thank everybody that, that logged in and, and took part of this and thank these three families that took the time out of their day um, to join us and hopefully provide uh, some reassurance um, and some answers to questions that maybe were out there for you. Uh, again, don't forget we are still accepting applications for the fall semester. The deadline for that is July 23rd as well as the spring semester. Um, go ahead and check us out online www.nmmi.edu. You can also find us on social media platforms. We've got a, a YouTube channel. This video will be posted there. We're also on Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, uh, and lastly, again, uh, from all of us here at NMMI and the admissions office, uh, thank you for taking the time out to join us tonight. Uh, we hope you have a great rest of the week and a weekend, and we look forward to talking to you all soon. Thank you.